Hey everyone, it's Miss Bell here again from the Science Lab, and today we're going to be talking about not only one, but two types of energy. Can you guess what they are? Hmm, let me give you a hint. And. It is sound and light energy. So when we talk about sound energy, basically that's just a type of energy that we can hear with our ears. And when an object vibrates, maybe it hits something or something comes in contact with it, it causes movement in the air around that object. And that creates sound waves. And those sound waves travel through the air to our ears. And that's how we can hear sound. Now, when you talk about volume, that's either how soft or how loud <laughs> a sound is. And with pitch, that either means how low or how high a sound sounds. And when sound energy happens, all those vibrations moving through the air, they can either go really slow, and that'll be a low pitch, or they can go really fast, really fast, really fast, and it'll be a high sounding pitch. Here I have all sorts of different bottles, some made out of glass, some made out of plastic, some empty, some filled with water, and I want to play around with the sounds and the pitches and the volumes that I can make from these musical instruments. Let's see. You can even make a musical instrument like a trombone if you get a bottle and fill it with water and place a straw in and you can move the straw up and down in the water and hear the different sounds. So as my straw moves further down into the water, that pitch is really, really high and squeaky. And as I move it up and blow into the straw, it gets lower and lower in pitch. Okay, right here I have a musical instrument that I <laughs> tried to make here in the science lab. And all you really need is some sort of sturdy box, a really big, stretchy, but strong rubber band, and then something like test tubes or maybe thick markers um, to use. So with this, we are going to keep this one on the right still and this one on the left sliding away from the other tube and close to the other tube. And what we're going to pay attention to is how close the two tubes are or how far away the tubes are. And we're going to look at the length of the rubber band right here between the tubes. So here is a long length. Here is a kind of medium length, and here is a short length. And with the lengths, that is going to help us hear and determine what kind of pitch it's going to have. So if it's really far and the length is long, it's going to have a low pitch. Can you say that? Low pitch. <laughs> and then... If they get closer, it's going to have a high pitch. Can you say that? High pitch. And you can adjust the distance from each other. So long, medium, 
close together. And you can play around with the different pitches and the different sounds that you hear. And here I have two little containers with cut up balloons stretched over the top and secured with the rubber band almost to where they replicate drums in a sense. And on top of the drums I placed some items that are considered to be kind of lightweight like little straw pieces, little grains of rice, some sand, and even some pom-poms. And we're going to take a metal can and a metal spoon and we're going to tap, 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 tap on the can with the metal spoon all around our little drums. And we're going to see what happens, if anything. What do you think? If I bang on my can close to my drums with all these lightweight objects, are we going to see something happen in front of our eyes? Or will it depend on how close I am to the object versus how far away? What about the position of my can? Does that make a difference? Does it need to be with the whole, f I don't know, facing? my drum? Could it be facing away from my drum or facing this way? What about on top versus to the side, the front or the back at an angle? Does it matter? That's what's so fun about science. You get to have fun and explore. But I'm going to bang away and we're going to see if anything happens to our drums. And if it does, then why? Why does that happen? Let's find out. And here I have another setup of bottles filled with different colored liquids. And each bottle has a different amount of, of liquid inside. So this bottle has more of a liquid volume inside versus this bottle. And this bottle has more liquid inside than this bottle. And with the amount of water in each bottle, it's going to affect how that bottle will sound as far as pitch goes. Will the sound be high and squeaky or will it be low type of sound? And the more water that is in the bottle, that's going to be a high pitch. So squeaky, high, high, high. And if there's little water or even no water, so the less amount of water, it's going to be a low sound pitch. So here's our low pitch sounds. And then as I go this way, it gets higher pitch. Here we go. High. Let me try blowing in them, see if that makes a difference in sound. play this type of musical instrument and make up songs. Can you name this tune? Here we go. Yay! 
<laughs> okay, so for this little demonstration, I'm going to use a tuning fork and a metal spoon. And then back here, I have a stand that has a um, little styrofoam sphere taped to a string that is attached to the very top. And that will allow my little ball to swing freely. But I'm not going to touch the ball myself. Instead, I'm going to let science be the one <laughs> to move the ball. So what I'm going to do is just tap my tuning fork with my metal spoon. And I'm just going to barely touch the tuning fork to the ball and we're going to see what happens. So basically after I hit the tuning fork there's going to be vibrations, sound vibrations moving through the air. And as they move through the air and my tuning fork comes into contact with the ball those vibrations with that slight touching, it's going to move the ball. And we're going to, we're going to be able to see how those vibrations can be visible at times. Because if I just do this, we can't see anything. Of course we can hear something and it sounds lovely, <laughs> but we can't see those vibrations. But you can definitely see it with this demonstration because I'm not over here banging on the ball. I'm just barely, barely putting it, putting my tuning fork up against the sphere. Okay, so I have my tuning forks right here. I have one in my hands and I'm going to just Hit the tuning fork so we can hear what it sounds like before I ever put it in the water. And now I'm going to hit it and then quickly put it into the water and we should be able to see those vibrations moving the water and making ripples. Here we go. One last experiment I want to talk about with sound energy is these cups right here. You might just think, Ms. Bell, what are we looking at? Cups with some string and these purple things um, floating underneath them? Well, they have a purpose. And with this little experiment, I'm going to take just regular string and a sponge. And I'm going to pull or drag my sponge across my string and I want you to see or hear if there's a sound. Let me do it again. I mean we can hear the scratchy sponge kind of pulling against the, the yarn or string and yeah it's like a slight sound. Let's take that one step further. Do you think or predict that anything would happen if we add a liquid to our sponge? Hmm, I have some water. I'm going to get my sponge wet. And I'm going to squeeze up all of that extra, extra water. And we're going to do the same thing. And I want you to see if, I don't know, there's a difference in sound. Hmm, okay, I got my string. I got my wet sponge. You can already see how the sponge looks different after we got it wet. Let's see if it sounds different. Oh, it has like a, hear it again. Oh, what? It sounds squeaky. So by just simply adding water to our sponge, we were able to see or here I should say, that sound difference. Now, what if we do the same thing, like what I have over here, with a cup instead? 
All of my sponges are wet. Let's see if there's a sound difference. Come on. Did you hear that? Let me try a different cup. Hold on. That's so cool. It sounds like a really old door at a haunted house. Let's try a different one. Hmm, let's try this small one. Almost sounds like a chicken. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> Let me try this red solo cup. Almost sounds like a frog. Ribbit, 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 or a toad. Croak, croak. Last one. Let's see what this one brings. Like a rocking chair. Grr, 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 just all these croaky amplified sounds. And that's because the wet sponge rubbing against the string like this, <laughs> it causes um, what we call friction. And that friction moves the air all around it, giving those vibrations throughout the air, and it travels up the string and in the cup, and then this almost acts like a speaker. It amplifies that sound. It makes it so much louder than when I just had my regular string and I was pulling my wet sponge across it. We could hear it barely here, but we could hear it so much louder over here. Isn't science so fun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs>